Let me take you on board the horror flight of Iran's civilian Mahan Air Flight 1152. Look me straight in the eye and tell me that this was not terrorism. At just after 4 in the afternoon on Thursday, July 23, Iranian Mahan Air Flight 1152 was crossing into Syrian airspace. Passengers were shocked to see out their oval-shaped windows what appeared to be a fighter jet approaching the plane. Naturally, panic ensued. The pilot rapidly descended and then climbed, causing the plane to careen down 125 feet and then up 500 feet. It was a bumpy ride for a few horrifying minutes, made worse by civilian passengers shouting in fear about the warplanes just outside their windows. The warplanes were US F-15s. Americans blatantly claimed they were conducting a visual surveillance of the flight. Insolence is what best describes the American excuse. Not only they are a force of occupation in Syria and have no right to be there in the first place, but also they have the impudence to call the harassment of an Iranian commercial flight in Syrian airspace surveillance. The U.S.'s unlawful maneuver led to civilian injuries on board the plane. Three Lebanese passengers, including two children, were injured and taken to a hospital by an ambulance from Beirut International Airport, along with several crew members who also were injured. This was just another episode of American acts of terrorism. A passenger plane was moving in a normal flight corridor and U.S. fighter jets conducted an illegal maneuver that could have ended in tragedy had the Syrian air defense missiles intercepted the jets and ended up downing the Mahan Air passenger plane. This time, Mahan Air narrowly avoided a disaster because of U.S. gambling with civilian lives without even a condemnation from a Western state or the United Nations. A surprise? Not really. This is expected. However, U.S. deeds in the region will not go unanswered anymore. Google Ayn al-Assad Air Base, you'll understand. Welcome to the Mideast Stream, I'm Marwa Osman. U.S. fighter jets terrorized an Iranian passenger plane on Thursday over Syrian airspace, forcing the pilot to make an emergency landing and leaving a number of passengers injured. Iran considered the incident as a terrorist act and a very dangerous matter that will have repercussions of unknown extent throughout the entire region. To discuss this issue with us from Beirut is General Elias Farhat, former Lebanese Army General. Thank you very much for being with us, uh, General Farhat. What were the U.S. fighters doing, intercepting a passenger plane, and what did they expect will happen by doing so? Likely that U.S. Uh, fighters F-16 have taken off from uh, an airbase in Jordan and intentionally went to uh, intercept a civilian Iranian carrier Mahan Airlines, which was full of civilian passengers on board and coming from Tehran to Beirut in a civilian uh, trip and uh, uh, flying in an international uh, air corridor that is used by uh, the civilian, uh, the, the civilian uh, air, aircrafts and it's well known for the Central Command and for the uh, American Command. So they, uh, are, they intentionally want to uh, harass those people and to uh, terrorize them uh, in order to prevent them to uh, use these uh, airlines and go fra uh, to uh, Iran and from Iran to Beirut. Well, uh, General, the U.S. Central Command said that the F-15 uh, jet fighters were on a routine air mission near Tanif, which is in Syria, and that it conducted what they called a standard visual inspection of one Mahan Air passenger airliner at what they called a safe distance, approximately a thousand meters. Does this mean this will actually become their new routine over Syrian airspace, especially against Iranian jets or passenger flights or whatever? This is ridiculous. It's not a coincidence that they were in a routine uh, uh, patrol 
uh, air patrol, and they it was a coincidence that they met a civilian uh, uh, carrier, uh, Mahan Airlines, and they uh, approached it to 100, 1,000 meters in order to make sure that it is civilian. This is something ridiculous, and all the people who know the civil aviation and uh, how to deal with uh, civil aircrafts that are uh, following the uh, uh, the trajectory of uh, the uh, the, uh, the air, uh, cor air corridor that is specified for such uh, f flights, uh, they know that this is nonsense. And uh, uh, furthermore, it's a uh, breach for the Syrian airspace, breach for the uh, Syrian uh, sovereignty over its uh, airspace. Uh, and uh, this is a violation for uh, the uh, international uh, aviation uh, organization, mm -hmm. which deals with the safety of civilian flights, mm -hmm. and the violation also to the international laws, which uh, which uh, uh, which means that uh, uh, two fighters are uh, flying over the uh, the airspace of the of a country of a sovereign country without its permission and committing uh, aggressions against a civilian airplane. Well, General, for going any permission from Damascus, the U.S. has been operating in the Arab country since 2014 under the pretext of fighting Daesh. Uh, the U.S., however, continues its, uh, its occupation in Syria and the eastern part of the Euphrates, even though Syria has already defeated the Takfiri group Daesh. It, it, and that happened in late 2017. We're in 2020 right now. What options do you think Syria has to make sure that such an incident is not repeated in its airspace? No one um, uh, is convinced uh, with this, the pretext of the United States that they are uh, deploying their uh, forces in, uh, in Syria and Iraq in order to fight ISIS. Uh, this is uh, nonsense because everybody knows who fought ISIS. It's the Al-Hashd al-Shabi in Iraq, and it's the, the, uh, the National Defense and the Syrian army and the, its allies who fought ISIS. and. Uh, uh, <coughs> uh, and uh, 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 occupied all the uh, land that was uh, occupied by ISIS. Uh, now the, the United States says that uh, uh, they want to fight ISIS. This is nonsense, and the, all the facts on the ground uh, indicates that uh, this is not true. Uh, so far, the, United, the Syrian government filed so many complaints to the United Nations Security Council and to the uh, United Na uh, Nations Secretariat complaining the, uh, the breach of uh, uh, the, uh, its airspace by the United States aviation. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, General, the United States is proving to the entire world day in, day out, that it follows the logic of gangsters and maybe bandits, not states, not uh, fully responsible states and not that uh, of the international law and it doesn't seem that any state or uh, international organization is going to condemn this act so far and whenever it breaks international law no one there says a peep it's the same thing all over again what's the point of statements of threats maybe made by uh, Syria or by the Islamic Republic of Iran when when nothing's going to happen, why not just engage with the occupation that is terrorizing the entirety of West Asia? United States acts as uh, it considers itself immune against any international regulations and any peaceful agreements. Uh, it violates the sovereignty of so many states, including Syria, Iraq, and other states, mm -hmm. and it uh, commits aggressive uh, actions against them. For example, in Afghanistan, they wanted to, uh, two or three years ago to try a bomb, which they called mother of the bombs. So they uh, th threw this bomb on a civilian village and killed 43 people in order to try this bomb, uh, regardless of the, uh, the, the, uh, the feelings and the, of the Afghan people and the international uh, public opinion. Uh, so they act without uh, any, uh, any kind of uh, 
uh, accountability or uh, or even uh, auto criticism or something like this and uh, this is what happened now with this uh, the interception of the uh, Mahan carrier uh, over Syria when uh, they intercepted it and they terrorized the passengers and uh, it was uh, at risk to uh, to fall down and uh, to cause a catastrophe mm -hmm. uh, in the and the, uh, and the aircraft and the, to the killing of uh, the passengers. So uh, they, uh, they, they, uh, they, they act as they don't care about mm -hmm. the international regulations and the uh, respect of uh, human rights. Well, I want to thank you very much from Beirut General Elias Farhad, former Lebanese Army General, for joining us to talk about the horror in the sky caused by the United States of America against a passenger uh, flight coming from Tehran landing in Beirut. Thank you very much for being with us. Please stay tuned for our next segment about Lebanon. Air defenses intercepted a new Israeli aggression above the capital Damascus last week in the latest wave of attacks that martyred a Hezbollah fighter near Damascus International Airport and four other fighters from the Syrian National Defense Forces. Israel then got busy sending military reinforcements to the northern frontier in occupied Palestine after Hezbollah threatened retaliation over the new Israeli aggression. Israeli paranoia in northern Palestine in this following report. Israel further stepped up its paranoia along the northern borders of occupied Palestine out of concern that Hezbollah may retaliate against military targets along the frontier for martyring one of its members in Israel's latest attack against Damascus International Airport last week. Tensions were further heightened after a blast along the border on the morning of Friday, July 24th, which sent shrapnels into a Druze town in the occupied Syrian Golan Heights. These moves came after Hezbollah directly accused Israel of targeting one of its fighters in an airstrike outside Damascus on Monday night. Israel has so far refused to comment on the matter, keeping its policy of ambiguity regarding its operations against Syria. In the past, Hezbollah has vowed to retaliate to losses of its soldiers in Syria with attacks on Israel. <laughs> أي كاد من كواد وحزب الله المقاومين أي كاد من كواد وحزب الله أي شاب من شباب حزب الله يقتل غيلة سنحمل المسؤولية الإسرائيلي وسنعتبر أن من حقنا أن نود في أي مكان وأي زمان وبالطريقة التي نراها مناسبة. This was the case in September when the resistance group fired three anti-tank guided missiles at Israeli military targets along the Lebanese border, targeting a military vehicle which allegedly had five soldiers inside after Israelis targeted two of its fighters in Syria the month before. In a tacit threat, the Israeli occupation blatantly warned Beirut that it sees the state of Lebanon as responsible for all actions emanating from Lebanon. Israel has been very concerned lately with the increasing capabilities of the Islamic resistance Hezbollah in Lebanon because the resistance has accumulated an immense military experience while fighting in Syria. This experience has helped Hezbollah to recognize how regular armies think, in which Hezbollah was fighting in the battle along with the Russian and Syrian armies. Experts in the region believe that this is true since as Hezbollah through the war in Syria was advancing its operational capabilities and military expertise, the Israeli occupation forces was busy cracking down on Palestinians, arresting people in the West Bank and distributing food in illegal colonial settlements. Israel is paranoid because it knows well that in the future war, facing off with the resistance will be totally different. Hezbollah seeks maneuvering inside the Palestinian occupied territories, unleashing the Rodwan force whose job is to infiltrate to Palestine from several points. 
To discuss this issue with us from Beirut is Mu'taz al wahwah political commentator. Thank you very much for being with us, Mu'taz. Now, first of all, Israel attacks Damascus and kills a Hezbollah fighter. Then a couple of days later, an incident unfolded near the uh, large Druze town of Majd al-Shams in the occupied Golan Heights. Israel said there were explosions near a certain security fence on the Syrian side. And then again, on Monday, we saw uh, tensions rising again in the occupied Shiba farms where uh, since we are uh, shooting this on Monday when this just happened and this show will be aired on a Tuesday, then things might change till tomorrow. What do you think happened? What do you think is happening right now uh, in our uh, Shiba farms, in the occupied Shiba farms? And do you think that these incidents are, are actually linked together? Uh, well, because the situation is currently on, uh, ongoing, I'll start with the, with the incident that took place uh, just under an hour ago or an hour ago in, uh, in the Shiva Farms. Uh, we're not too certain at the moment. Like I said, it is a developing story. Um, the situation is still hot. Uh, just before we went on air here, we, uh, we uh, heard that the clashes were still ongoing. All we know is that there is a security incident in the north of Palestine, uh, across the border from Lebanon, so not inside the Lebanese territory. Uh, we know that it does involve members of the resistance, and uh, we know that uh, at the moment the situation is very serious. Uh, what the nature of this operation is, what the nature of the situation is, is still unclear. The coming hours uh, will make that uh, more evident. Um, but what we can say definitely is that this is a result and a direct result of, uh, of the Zionist uh, occupation's continuous aggression against Lebanon and Syria for the last, uh, for the last few years. Mm -hmm. um, these uh, ongoing raids in Syria, uh, these unprovoked uh, raids uh, in Syria targeting the Syrian army, targeting the, the Islamic resistance and their allies, they've been absolutely unprovoked and the Israelis have been warned. They have been warned in the past that any casualties in the ranks, in the ranks of the resistance will be met with a response. The days where the resistance is attacked, where the people of the resistance is attacked, where our nations are attacked and uh, the Israelis can go about their business uh, calmly after that, these mm -hmm. days are over. Uh, well, we are now in the age of response and the uh, response will occur whether today's incident is the response or not, only time will tell. Well, since you said a response will occur and there's apparently something going on, we still don't know, it might actually be one of the responses, but do you think this new Israeli adventure, if it just continues, it might ignite the region or would it be something that's just lo uh, localized? It happens now, ends now. Well, uh, as uh, most, of, uh, most of the the experts have, uh, have highly indicated that this is not up to the Israeli anymore. He might, he might have the ability to start a particular event, but whether it ends or not is absolutely not up to him anymore. Uh, the ball's in the court of the resistance. Uh, the Zionist entity at the moment is entangled in several uh, internal dramas, apart from COVID-19 and apart from the Prime Minister's uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu's uh, corruption. Uh, they have internal political drama and political turmoil. They've had three elections in just under a year and they're heading into their fourth. They can't even form a cabinet, they can't form a, a government. Uh, so what happens from here on is not in the interest of the Israelis at all. Uh, like I said, they can uh, start this thing, but definitely whether they end it or not is not up to them at all. This is in the hands of the resistance. Well, uh, Mataz, uh, the U.S. Uh, Army General Mark Milley, uh, the Joint Chiefs Chairman, met with senior Israeli military and intelligence uh, commanders at an airbase in southern occupied Palestine. This happened uh, a couple of days back. Uh, the visit comes just um, four days after the air raid against uh, the capital Damascus. What indications is the U.S. trying to make with this visit specifically at this point in time? Well, what I honestly uh, fear is that uh, the United States is actually pressuring Israel to, to up its game against uh, what it sees as Iranian advancement in the region. We saw a few days ago um, uh, the U.S. 
uh, recklessly hassling a, uh, an Iranian uh, civilian passenger aircraft mm -hmm. over the airs of Syria. Uh, this, uh, this form of state terrorism uh, hasn't been seen for a very long time. The US is trying to up its ante against uh, Iran and its allies. Uh, over the last uh, several months, we can say from the uh, illegal uh, murder of uh, Hajj Qasim Soleimani and Abu Mahdi al-Muhandis, the United States has been carrying out several illegal aggressions against Iran and its allies, whether it's through cyber attacks or certain uh, proxy terrorist attacks inside Iran or airstrikes, direct airstrikes. So the US really does want Israel on board. Israel is not in any position to be on board a full uh, scale campaign against Iran and her allies in the region. Mm -hmm. But it is in the US's best interest to uh, finally cash in on all the military aid that has been giving Israel over the last several decades. And it seems to be pushing Benjamin Netanyahu in this direction, that we need you to up your game. And it looks like they are going to get Israel into a bigger mess than Israel can handle at the moment. Well, usually Israel doesn't comment on uh, any attack that it uh, does against the uh, Syrian Republic, uh, but it has acknowledged that it conducted as many as 300 raids uh, inside Syria since the start of the war on Syria in 2011. We understand that the international community stands with Israel. This is not new for us, but the aggression that Israel is allowed to get away with only shows that no one really cares what happens to the nations in West Asia and even further than that. For example, what do you think these same Western states would react and how, how would they react if per se Syria retaliates, Lebanon, Iran, Yemen, Israel is even bombing Yemen. How do you think they would react if these aggressions are returned to the aggressors? Well, I think the, their reactions uh, are not important at the moment. Um, I think it's been uh, exposed to the masses at the very least that the double standards of the West is selective humanity is uh, a legitimate policy that Western governments have. Uh, the people in the West, especially in the United States, have no faith in their governments or the, or the stances of their governments anymore. So I think this is a non-issue really. We've gotten used to uh, not having the support of, the, of these Western uh, regimes. We've gotten used to uh, their bias towards Israel. We've gotten used to their silence in the face of the crimes. We bleed and then they don't care. And the second that there is an Israeli car that is scratched, the whole world is up in arms. I think right now, uh, we can't expect much from governments and nations that don't even care about the basic human rights of their own people. We've seen in the last few days in the United States, in Portland in, sp in particular, where uh, homeland security has been unleashed on peaceful protesters. Protesters have been beaten, they've been tear gassed, and on, on at least two occasions, two protesters have been killed. Um, these are civilians who are being fired upon by a security agency which, is, which has been uh, entrusted with dealing with matters of national security. So if you're a government who treats your population who are peacefully protesting as threats to national security, then I think uh, your statements and uh, your stances are really void of, of uh, any uh, material weight, to be honest. So it doesn't really bother us or anyone else. It shouldn't really matter to anybody in the world. Mm -hmm. how these governments react or how these governments or what these governments say about us, about our people, about what's happening in the region. Well, I want to thank you very much uh, from Beirut, Mataz al wahbah political commentator, for joining us to talk about this. And I want to apologize for our viewers if something does change from now until this uh, show is aired. We promise you that we will get you the newest uh, reports next time we see you on the Mideast stream.